Hello everyone, happy Thursday. It's a hot one here. I just, I got out of work a little bit early and ran a couple errands. Well, walked a couple errands. It was too hot to run. So I'm cooling off now, having a La Croix, because everybody else is. And I'm cutting back on soda. So today I'm flying solo. Mark is at work. Um, so we are going to be doing Smokey Steve, and no Mark, uh, and we're doing the Ask It Basket again. So, Basket Basket is a basket, as you can see, and it is filled with topics that I had added some, and then uh, viewers and subscribers had left in the comments uh, topics they thought would be interesting to hear about or to hear my perspective on. Um, so, feel free, before we get started, to, if you have a topic, anything that you'd want to hear about, um, a point of interest, Feel free to leave it in the comments below, and we'll throw it into the basket. I think I'll get Mark in here on one of these sometime, actually. I know it says Steve's Ask It Basket, but we share, so. Uh, so I'm going to go into the basket. I'm not going to look. I'm going to pull a topic. I've prepared nothing, except that I know what topics are in there, so it's going to be kind of seat in my pants. So that's the challenge of this for me. All right, so basket. And I got coming out. Coming out. I'm assuming I'll go the gay route with this because coming out often refers to that. Uh, it's weird because Mark and I, in case you haven't been paying attention, Mark and I are not Bert and Ernie. We are gay. Um, we are a gay couple. But we don't, aside from just living our lives, a lot of stuff about being gay doesn't really come up. There was actually a couple of requests I remember throwing in the basket that people had commented on. Being gay in America in 2019, uh, homophobia and hate crimes, different things like that. Uh, maybe I'll weave some of that in, but I'll just stick to coming out. Now, I'll tell you a little bit of my coming out story very briefly. Um, everyone knew I was gay but me. Put it that way. Uh, to the extent that I'm effeminate now, I was much more effeminate when I was younger. Uh, I was a fat kid, I've said that a bunch of times, but when the weight came off, my personality started to come out, and I went from being the fat kid to the gay kid. So the taunts changed, you know, they didn't go away, but they went from, be hey fatty, to hey fat, you know, the star it starts with F and it ends with T, and it's, you know. So, early on people suspected as much of me, just based on my behavior. And, of course, I was like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, um, and kept it all to myself. So that got me through high school. I had a couple girlfriends, and I, God, I tried to make it work. I really tried to make it work. I thought I just didn't like people, pretty much, because I was raised Catholic, and it was the idea that I would have been gay is just not on the table. Even if it was how I felt, it was just not happening at all. So, um... I got through one month of college. <laughs> um, the summer between high school and college, I got into like the rave scene such that we had one locally, and I was going down to Philly a little bit, and going to different clubs and parties and experimenting with different things, mostly substances, and um, started feeling a little more free and, and willing to experiment with other stuff. So I ended up going to a party, a rave, with a friend of mine. It was at like an abandoned airport hangar out in the middle of nowhere. and there was a guy who was a friend of a friend who was gay. I had never met a real-life gay person before that wasn't either a hairdresser or a choir director, or in their 40s or 50s. So this was different. You know, I grew up in a very small town. Um, all the gay guys were probably married or priests. So having met this guy, we hung out, we talked. He made a move. I didn't stop him. And... Then, of course, we started dating, because I was head over heels in love, because he was my first, or whatever. And I let it go. That friend I was visiting knew. And I'm in college, so I have that big group of college friends who I've only known a month. And we're close, as, but not close, but close, but not close. They're not like high school friends I've known since kindergarten. So I slowly begin coming out to them, and the response is, eh. It was kind of like I was going with my most disposable friends. That's really the wrong word. But the ones I was the least close to. Started there, tested the waters, and thought, well, they're okay with it. And then I moved in a little closer, and a little closer. Now, I called my mom and told her what happened. I don't 
recommend calling. Certainly now with the age of new media, do not text. Um, I, I, I just don't recommend it. Uh, if I had to do over, I may have done it differently. But it was phone or nothing at that point. So I called my mom and told her what happened. I was hysterical. She was fine. I think she had asked me, well, does this mean you're bisexual? And I said, I don't know. I'm sorry. I know it's not like having a war hero with the family. I was a wreck. And then we didn't talk for three days. And I think she thought I killed myself or something over it. Um, it was after that I spent a few days with the guy. I went to his apartment and we hung out. And shortly after I came out, I couldn't even introduce myself without telling you I was gay. As if, you know, Helen Keller could have told I was gay. But I would make sure everybody knew. I was very green to the whole thing. And I was finally comfortable with myself and with that part of myself. And wanted everybody to know. So everybody knew. And I was in parades and had rainbow clothes and, and, and all the stuff that went with that. So that was kind of my coming out. And then as I got more comfortable with myself, oddly, some of my mannerisms slowed down. I, I was a little bit less flamboyant. I kind of calmed down in my dress and my mannerisms. I didn't shake hands with you and say, hi, Steve, homosexual, how are you doing? You know, that wasn't really the, the direction it went. So that was my, my bit of, com of coming out. Now that was in the year 2000, so that was a while ago. I work with kids now, young adults, like 16 and up, and their experiences are much different than mine. There is, despite a lot of the progress I think that has gone on and there's been setbacks in progress and that's that's debatable and and we don't do debates <laughs> um that from speaking with them and many of them are lgbt foster kids disproportionately high number of them i said we wouldn't debate um that coming out for them is not such a different experience but they have like 10 different names for their sexual identities. It's very different. You know, when I was kind of growing up, it was gay, straight, bisexual. And bisexual people get crap from gay and straight people because they both just think they're confused. Gay pe Straight people think they're gay. Gay people think they're confused. It's, they get a lot of crap. You know, if you come out as bisexual, it's probably scarier, I would think. I would guess, maybe. I don't know. Um, but the kids have like 10 different identifiers, pansexual, uh, non-binary, and then there's all the gender identifiers that go with it because it's LGBT and individuals who are transgender get sucked in with people whose sexual orientation is, you know, not heterosexual. It's a whole bunch of letters. It's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes with it. I'm guessing, though I don't know, that if I had to come out to my parents as transgender, I would have been a lot more nervous, and the odds that I would have been disowned might have been a little higher. Just putting that out there. Um, so that was my coming out experience. <laughs> that was some of the stories they've shared with me. Some of them were thrown out because they were, they were gay. But also what I've noticed is that I was 18 when I came out. I've known guys, I met a guy who my parents went to high school with, he, so he would have been in early 60s. And then once the kids were growing up and out of the house and that, then he got divorced and came out. So he lived his whole life. I'm sure he's glad he had kids. I mean, I imagine. I don't know how his wife and him functioned or if she knew. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's, he came out so late in life. I don't know. I feel like I would be so bitter if I lived my whole life not being... I mean, don't get me wrong, who, who I'm sleeping with is a very small part of me. You know, it's not my entire identity. It's, it's one bit of the rest of my life, and it's not even that, you know. Um, but to even hold, withhold that part of myself, let's say until I was 60, that would be rough. You know, there's another friend of a friend whose wife passed away, and then came, the gentleman came out. You know, that's, a, that's different, too. I mean, that's... To feel, I can't help but think I would have felt trapped to some degree. But then again, every relationship has their own agreements and bargains. And who knows what goes on behind closed doors with two individuals, man and woman. And who knows if they don't love each other and maybe they had an arrangement. I mean, you know, Mark and I are accustomed to asking a lot of each other. Who's to say other couples don't do the same thing? So, Mark's coming out story is decidedly different. I'll let him tell that sometime. Because Mark is a little bit older than I am. And so the times were different. But he's from 
Pittsburgh, suburban Pittsburgh. I grew up in a very small town in a almost rural area. He grew up outside of a city. My area is, God bless it, 20 to 30 years back in time, culturally, socially, compared to the rest of the world. You know, we just got sun-dried tomatoes. So we're a little, we're a little back, a little bit backwards. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't really come up too much being gay in my everyday life. You know, I have a picture of Mark at work in my office. I have art stuff he made me. We, we're having a, a thing at work in a couple weeks uh, to like celebrate the end of the, the fiscal year and the beginning of the new one or the end of summer. So we're having a cookout. Mark's going to bake something that I'll bring. He's baked stuff for work before. He filled a cake order for one of my coworkers. So no one makes a big deal about it. Nobody uh, treats me like I'm weird. Now, granted, I work in human services and social services. So, you know, God help the outcasts is kind of the battle cry. Uh, but at the same time, they don't make it feel like too comfortable. They're not trying too hard, you know, to make us feel comfortable. Uh, I've encountered that actually with some women who want to be friends with, uh, I'm sorry if I'm squinting, the light feels incredibly bright today. Um, who want to be friends with me or, and they will talk to me like I'm a stereotype and it's not mean, you know, it's meant to create closeness and start a friendship. And, um, I'll be like, hi, I'm Steve. And of course they'll pick up on that. I'm gay in like two seconds. And they'll be like, oh honey, I love, now I have a bestie while I'm here. Do you want to go get coffee? Maybe we'll go shopping afterwards. Um, uh, first of all, I, you seem very nice. I'm not shopping for besties. It'd be nice to have someone to, to talk with. I hate shopping. Please don't assume. You're assuming all the stereotypes about me that other people assume about gay people. You're just doing it with a smile. You know, that's it's a little bit different. You know, I'm not I'm not good with style or fashion. I would buy gur animals for adults if they made them. Um, I can't dye your hair very well. Uh, I could dye my mom's hair because I've been doing it for years. But up beyond that, it's going to be streaky. Um, you know, and I wouldn't say I'm masculine exactly. I'm just not good at stereotypical things that people think gay men are good at. You know, it's just, it's not me. Uh, so that kind of rolls into, you know, finding my identity after coming out. I tried on a few different ones here and there. I tried different styles of clothing. I ran with different scenes. I did this indie rock thing for a hot minute. I was such a poser. You know, let me find some obscure music nobody likes and say I love it. And then if I ask you if you've heard of the band and you say no, I scoff at you. Like you just said that you like, I don't know, Britney Spears or something. And I tried that on, it didn't work. I tried on the raver scene, that didn't really stick. You know, until I finally just found my regular old self. So coming out let me out of that bit of holding myself back. But I didn't really start to get comfortable in my own skin until probably 10 years later or so. You know, addiction stalls growth and that stalled too. So I was kind of stuck for six or seven years. I didn't really mature. But then after that, a few more years, and I really kind of got comfortable in my skin. Really in this relationship, I got pretty comfortable too. So... I think that's as much gay stuff as I might be able to muster in one sitting. Uh, it was a good topic. I'm glad that it got put in the Ask It basket. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions or anything I left out or mentioned that you have uh, thoughts on, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, again, feel free to leave another suggestion below if you feel so inclined. Uh, for other promotions that we have going on, please, I will include our contact information below our P.O. Box. We are still doing a viewer challenge. We are collecting postcards from your city, your state, your country, wherever you're from. Just a little something. And we're displaying it up here. Hopefully we're trying to hit the globe. But as many places as we can get. Uh, we're also taking requests for shout outs at the moment too. So if you leave your name and where you're from in the comments, we will add you to the list. We do shout outs maybe two days a week, sometimes three. And then once a month, if you've had a shout out, you're entered into a contest to win a piece of Mark's handiwork, crafty work. So, so thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe, hit the like button. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. Again, our email and our contact information is below for any correspondence. Thank you for watching. And I will catch up with y'all soon. Have a gay day. Bye.